This is Southern Cross News with Joe Palmer. Good evening everyone and welcome to Southern Cross News. Tasmania police say a man's body which was found in Hobart's CBD overnight could have been there for more than a week. Early investigations have ruled out foul play, but authorities say mystery still surrounds the circumstances of the death. Louise Hedger has our report. A passerby found the man's body in a garden bed just outside the Royal Hobart Hospital at about two o'clock this morning. Police say that person saw a bag and on further inspection discovered the body which was in a mild state of decomposition. People may well have walked past that location and you wouldn't necessarily have seen the deceased in there. Um, as to where and how he was positioned behind the bushes. The area was today cordoned off for hours as authorities tried to piece together what happened. It's still not yet clear how or why he ended up here, but police say the man did have a history of mental illness. He was last treated here at the Royal on the 13th of October, which is forming part of their investigation. The last confirmed sighting we have of the deceased at this stage was at approximately 7pm on the 15th of this month. So, um, based on that, somewhere between the 15th and this morning. Early pathology investigations have ruled out foul play and assault. How he died is yet to be determined, but it is hoped CCTV from the area will assist. I think in my nearly 30 years of policing, it's probably one of the more unusual ones I've dealt with. While police say they think they know the identity of the man, that's not formally confirmed and next of kin are yet to be identified. It's understood he was from Hobart and did live in temporary accommodation. The man was last seen wearing two backpacks, a black polar fleece top, grey track pants and white sand shoes. Anyone with any information is urged to contact Crime Stoppers. An ongoing feud between the teachers' union and the government has reached new heights today as educators walk off the job to take part in mass protests across the state, each party blaming the other for causing chaos and confusion as many state schools prepare to close their doors early tomorrow afternoon. Left in the dark, parents across Tasmania today scrambling to work out how to pick up their children when schools shut down early tomorrow. I am stopping work to go and pick them up, so it's an inconvenience for me. It's not, it's not an easy step for me. It's not, um, it's not something that I'm doing lightly either, but I'm doing it because I support the teachers. Just yesterday, parents were told 65 state schools would start closing from 1.30 on Wednesday. Teachers walking off the job to join rallies for better pay and conditions. The union actually advised the government 11 days ago that we would be stopping work on uh, Wednesday and it took them till the close of schools late yesterday afternoon to actually advise parents. In a statement, the Education Minister said it took time for principals to recommend whether a school be closed, their main concern being child safety. The government standing by its 2% pay rise offer for teachers, saying it was fair. They have intense workloads of 60 hours a week on average for principals, 55 hours a week on average for teachers. Our teacher assistants are paid on average $25,000. There is so much pressure on our system. I do not know how teachers possibly um, get through a day, eight hours in a day with you know, more than 30 children to wrangle through that day. Meanwhile, theatre nurses at the Royal Hobart Hospital are refusing to work overtime hours, also demanding better conditions. To finish the elective list, we're being asked to do overtime and it's there's no one to replace us, so we just try and finish the list so people can get the care they need. Some nurses are working up to five or six hours of overtime every day. Um, we have had, had a single situation where we've seen nurses work 24 hours around the clock. Unions will gather for the largest strikes in more than a decade from 3pm tomorrow. Michelle Wisby, Southern Cross News. A coronial inquest into the death of a Launceston road worker in 2013 has heard conflicting evidence over whether or not a road work safety vehicle could have saved his life. Terence William Close was killed after he was run over by a driver who was adjusting the radio. Sean McComish has more. Seven witnesses today gave evidence into the death of Terence Close who was directing traffic in February 2013. Among them was the driver travelling behind the car which struck the 62-year-old. Jeremy Fuller told the court he had the window down and heard a bang. 
and thought an item had fallen off a ute until he saw a body go up in the air. Following the crash, driver Murray Higgs was given a three-month suspended sentence. He told police he was adjusting his radio as he passed through the roadworks on Vermont Road in Mowbray. There had been questions over a medical condition affecting his eyesight, but crash investigator Constable Nigel Housergo today said Higgs had told him otherwise, claiming even if he had eyes like Superman, the crash still would have happened. Council assisting the coroner also questioned if the tragedy could have been avoided if a shadow vehicle had been used. Former Altus worker Rex Purcell answered Higgs would have hit the vehicle instead of Terry, but he noted he had never seen a shadow vehicle used in Tasmanian roads. Last year, Altus traffic was fined a quarter of a million dollars for pleading guilty to a workplace safety charge. The coronial inquest continues tomorrow. Sean McComish, Southern Cross News. A 28-year-old man from Claremont has today appeared in Hobart's Magistrates Court after allegedly lighting vegetation fires around Old Beach and Herdsman's Cove yesterday. Authorities were tasked to attend nine grass fires across the area, which were determined to be deliberately lit. Police arrested the man nearby and say the behaviour is disappointing as it puts life and property at risk. Quick thinking and action by volunteer firefighters have prevented a large shed fire from spreading to other properties in Mountain River this afternoon. Six Tasmania Fire Service crews were tasked to attend the blaze just before 11.30 where they worked for hours before they could bring it under control. The shed contains a number of items. Uh, there is a, a car collection, uh, workshop materials, storage and things like that. So it's, it is quite a heavy fuel load within, even though the structure is steel and the roof is steel. Investigations are continuing into how the fire started, with damage estimated at $250,000. Police say a driver could have been seriously injured if he wasn't wearing a seatbelt following a truck crash on the Bridport Highway last night. The truck was carrying 37 cows at the time with some dying on impact and others humanely euthanised at the scene. The 46-year-old Sprayton man was transported to the Launceston General Hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Investigations are ongoing but speed, drugs and alcohol have been ruled out as factors. Health authorities are urging Tasmanians to keep up to date with their measles vaccinations after a case of the disease has been confirmed on the East Coast. It's the first case detected in the state since 2016, the person infected while travelling in South East Asia. But public health says it's unlikely the disease will spread, with the majority of Tasmanians now immunised against we trust measles. It's unlikely that people uh, will have measles arising from contact with this most recent case, but anyone who does suspect they have measles uh, should seek medical attention. Symptoms include a fever, cough, runny nose, conjunctivitis and a rash. Long-term strategies to tackle Hobart's traffic congestion will be discussed at a public forum next month. The RACT says it's received more than 70 submissions for its Greater Hobart Mobility Vision. It comes following a national report revealing Hobart is the fourth most congested city in the country and travel time has increased between the capital and surrounding suburbs over the past five years. The peak motoring body says finding a solution is critical as the population and number of visitors to Tasmania grows. Australia's iconic Aurora Australis ship is preparing to set sail this week for its first trip to Antarctica for the summer. Scientists will be undertaking groundbreaking research on the journey which could unlock the secrets of climate change. Loading up for a busy summer, the Aurora Australis preparing to leave for Antarctica for its first voyage of the season. Every season's a logistical challenge for us. It's all about uh, getting the, the ships in place, all the uh, aircraft in place, helicopters, uh, and getting all our expeditioners uh, to Antarctica safely. Between now and March, around 500 scientists, tradies and engineers will travel to the frozen continent. For some scientists, climate change research will be a priority. One of the big projects this coming summer is to look at how a natural process in the atmosphere removes uh, chemicals from the atmosphere and those chemicals are the ozone depleting gases. The group will build a temporary science lab on an ice sheet, drilling down 250 metres to reach 100 year old ice cores.
They will be looking for traces of a molecule that naturally cleans our atmosphere by getting rid of greenhouse gases impacting our climate. The global atmosphere contains around about one kilogram of this tracer which we're measuring. We're trying to measure an amount of that in the ice in the Antarctic over the last 150 years. So you can, you can judge from that that it's an extremely difficult challenge. Providing crucial data about future climates. This is really uh, pushing the limits of our, of our understanding. Uh, this process has been measured in the atmosphere for the last 10 to 20 years, but going back in, into the past, it's completely unknown. The Aurora Australis leaves Hobart on Thursday, taking around two weeks to reach Antarctica. Michelle Wisby, Southern Cross News. The latest research to help bolster the state's forestry sector has been showcased at a roadshow in Launceston today. Among the innovations, one researcher has shown how high sensory drones can be used to gather information in a fraction of the time. It's one of Tasmania's biggest industries and now forestry stakeholders are looking at ways to bolster the sector. The industry is very strong at the moment. There's a really big demand out there for the timbers that we are producing. Um, so it's a very good time for industry to be reinvesting in research and, and, and trying to get ahead while those times are good. Researchers at the University of Tasmania spruiking the latest innovations at a roadshow in Launceston today. And the projects vary um, right through from tree genetics through to studying what you can do with timber in terms of engineered wood products. Sean Krasansky is one of 22 students showing off their research. He says high sensory drone technology can be used to venture beneath the canopy to collect data. It's basically seeing how our human eyes do uh, to map the forest. The idea is that it will be able to perceive its environment and be able to sense where those trees are and navigate around them. And he claims it could be a huge time saver. You can collect measurements in uh, about 15 minutes, which can give you a lot more information uh, than you can collect traditionally uh, through manual techniques in a few hours worth of work. Having these guys being able to work on those sort of fringe projects that industry can't work on is really important. The roadshow continues until Friday. Judy Augustine, Southern Cross News. Now let's take a look at the day's business and finance news so with thanks to TASPLAN, your local super fund. The Australian share market has closed way down again, with energy and material stocks dragging the ASX back towards last week's six-month low. The ASX 200 index dropped by 61.8 points. A short time ago, the Australian dollar was trading at 70.65 US cents and 107.97 New Zealand cents. Well, it's been an unforgettable day for three of the state's best young female footballers with Bernie twins Chloe and Libby Haynes, along with Clarence Gunn, Nicole Bresnahan, bound for the North Melbourne Football Club after being picked up in today's AFLW draft. Having been part of North Melbourne's Next Generation Academy, the Bernie sisters were expected to end up at the club with Chloe's name read out first at pick 53. Yeah, it was crazy. So it must have been like a bit glitchy or something on the live stream. So I got a text about really like five seconds before from North Melbourne saying congrats for making it. And the pair only had to wait three more picks for Libby's name to be called. So when Chloe's name got called out, I um, was obviously stoked for her and then was just hoping we would see my name called out in the next couple. But yeah, so that was really overwhelming once we both our names got called out. Following standout years for Bernie and the TSLW, the Northwest Coast Twins were the only two Tasmanians thought to be in the mix, but North Melbourne had one more in their sights. With pick 61, the North Melbourne Football Club select Nicole Bresnan from Clarence Football Club. Definitely did not um, think yeah, that I'd get picked, but no, it was definitely a really awesome outcome. With the Kangaroos set to establish a Tasmanian training base ahead of the club's inaugural AFLW season, the three will now get to realise their footballing dreams while staying in their home state for the majority of the year. Not have to relocate and um, we can still play on the mainland and, and then also play back here down in front of family and friends so it's just awesome to yeah, about, have that opportunity now. The Kingbra Tigers have set about trying to ensure a more successful 2019 TSL season, appointing new strength and conditioning coach Matt Howell to the club, having recently completed his training in exercise science in the United States. The better physical condition they're in, hopefully that means a better football they can play. So you've got a, a young kid who's really talented, but he's up against some bigger bodies. Well, if we can get him fitter and uh, stronger, that's going to help him to perform against those bigger bodies. Our will commence in the role immediately in preparations for the Tigers pre-season program beginning next month.
The Launceston Tornadoes have re-signed American coach Derek Washington to the club for 2019. Washington helped lead the side to the 2018 Siebel Championship match against Bendigo and returns to Launceston with unfinished business after the Torns fell 23 points short of claiming the title. The community has been a great year. Uh, the organization has been great. The club supported me and what I wanted to do. and It's just a great fit for my future and for the future here in Launceston. The Tornadoes are expected to join a newly formed Victorian Premier League competition from next year, following the recent announcement that the Siebel would no longer continue into the future. Good evening. Showers for most of the state at some point during the day today. Great Lake East had 6 millimetres to 3pm. Hobart and Friendly Beach is the warmest around the state on 21 degrees. Launceston and Burnie 18, Devonport 19. Campania, Fingal and St Helens all 20. Ooze 18 today. Flinders Island and Smithton 17. King Island, Low Head and Strawn 16 degrees. And Lyawini 12. Now as the rain band with the cold front moved to the east, the Westleys brought a few showers in patchy cloud as well. Low cloud is over coastal areas of Western and South Australia, a trough extends from the Kimberley region through the Northern Territory to Queensland. Tomorrow, the southeast of the nation under a high pressure system, a cold front is just south of the bight, a surface trough traverses most northern states. West to southwest winds reaching 30 knots over the south, easing to 5 to 15 knots by late afternoon, swells to 4 metres in western and southern waters, and in the south we do have a strong wind warning for waters between Tasman Island and Low Rocky Point. Hobart midweek, partly cloudy and 16, 15 the top for Geefton, a shower or two clearing, partly cloudy for Bothwell and 13 degrees. Launceston partly cloudy, 4 overnight, 18 the top, 16 for Devonport, bit of cloud over Cressy and 16 after a cool start. Burnie partly cloudy and 17, 15 the top for Strawn with a morning shower clearing, partly cloudy on King Island, 14 degrees at Curry. St Helens tomorrow partly cloudy as well, 15, 15 also for Swansea, Orford, 16. The UV touching a high 7. On Thursday, showers developing from the west late morning, extending to the far south in the evening. A cloudy day on Friday with a shower over the west and south easing, mainly fine over the central north on Saturday, but showers for most other areas mainly during the morning. A possible shower in Perth tomorrow, sunny in Adelaide, a cool 17 in Melbourne, partly cloudy for all the other centres, a windy start in Sydney and temperatures into the 30s through Queensland. Partly cloudy in Hobart, 14 at the moment, 16 in Launceston, 14 degrees in Devonport. That's the way it all is at the moment, Joe. but rest assured I'll be monitoring things to make sure nothing changes. Oh, good on you, Murph. We love it. Thanks so much. Look, that's all from the news team for now. Thanks for your company. Good night.